So there's been a lot of rumors tonight on how Titanfall 2 has an exploit going around where attackers can apparently take control of your computers and modify files on your hard drive. And as an exploit developer, <coughs> I'm going to explain to you why I don't really believe those rumors. I think it's kind of like fear mongering or a hoax. So let's dive right in. So who am I? I am a professional exploit developer or vulnerability, or vulnerability researcher. I have been doing game modding, game hacking, reverse engineering for over 10 years. Um, you could say I'm a computer security expert and I actually teach how to write exploits like this to students. So I feel like I'm qualified to speak about this subject. If you look in the news right now, these mainstream outlets are actually starting to pick up this story, which I think is hilarious because if you read one of these stories, what they're really doing is they don't have any substantial evidence except for these random like tweets that are citing these random Discord posts. And like some of these tweets have like 10,000 likes, which is really disappointing to me because I feel like a lot of this, th these claims are ups unsubstantiated. And if you read some of these posts, to me as a computer security expert, they make like no sense. Um, so first I'll explain to you why like I think that this might be plausible to a lot of like you know ordinary people, why ordinary people might believe this, why they might retweet that and stuff like that. I'm not blaming them because it is this very scary thing to see like, like oh they can take over my computer. So I'll explain why this might seem like something that's really believable to a normal person, right? Um, first of all like Titanfall is a game that's based um, it's kind of based originally on the source engine. Obviously they've made a, some few modifications to the engine. It's like a bit, <coughs> some custom stuff on top of source engine. Anyway, source engine has not the greatest security track record, especially for a CSGO. Um, there's been several RCE vulnerabilities in the past year or two. And in general, game security is not the best. Um, we've had these infected lobby things going back all the way to like, you know, as long as I can remember, right? And so I can see why people might believe this type of thing. I wouldn't be surprised if there was really a Titanfall RCE you know, vulnerability today. I'll explain also <laughs> why that Discord announcement makes no fucking sense. So first of all, if I'm reading this, what stands out to me is it says someone discovered that the temporary file that Titanfall uses has a size cap. Okay, so first of all, that doesn't make sense to me because um, Buffer overflow attacks, like the ones this one is describing, I'll get to that in a second. They don't have anything to do with the files on your computer. This is all just happening inside the game's memory, not on like random files on your hard drive. And, and second of all, like the files on your hard drive, on your computer, they don't have a size cap, right? Because I can download like a one gigabyte video file and that file can grow as large as it needs to be. Um, you can have files that are, can grow to arbitrary size as long as your hard drive can fit them, right? So that doesn't make sense. Um, second of all, it says that after it exceeds that size cap, it'll start overwriting other files um, with the username. That also doesn't make sense because modern systems will not treat you know, random data like your username as executable code. This is due to a mitigation or exploit defense called data execution prevention. Um, and this was introduced like a really long time ago. Like basically every system in the past 15 years has had this protection on that stops your computer from treating random data like your username as code. And if you check in your like PC properties, you can see that it's probably on your computer right now. I imagine basically every system that's been shipped in the last 15 years has it on by default. So that doesn't make sense. So I'll explain actually how attackers you know, would gain control of your computer by using an exploit like that if it did exist. So the two classes of vulnerabilities here are called, you know, arbitrary code execution or sometimes remote code execution. So AC and RCE. And I'm going to explain to you why this is probably not what's going on with Titanfall tonight. So uh, I mentioned the term buffer overflow earlier. So what is a buffer overflow attack? A buffer overflow attack is kind of similar to what the guy in the Discord post was trying to describe. He was probably trying to describe or explain what a buffer overflow is. It's essentially when you have like a fixed amount of a fixed like piece of memory in the game's um, in the game's memory, right? And that region only has so much space to hold a username. And if you give it a username that's too big, it's going to flow past the end of that that buffer, past the end of that um, memory region, and it's going to start corrupting all the stuff that's after it. 
So for example, if you have, uh, let's say, you know, a piece of a, like a code pointer that's living directly after your username buffer, if the attacker fills up the username buffer, there's no problem yet. But if he overflows it, then he can change that code pointer to be whatever he wants. And that's one way that's a really common technique for attackers to exploit a so-called buffer overflow and take control over the system. What's happening here is basically your CPU is like, oh, today I will you know, jump to this code pointer. And it's clueless. And it's just going to jump to that bad um, like malicious pointer that the attacker overwrote the original one with, right? So the original pointer, let's say it was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now the attacker has overwritten it with a uh, value that they specify. Let's say it's like zero x bad food. And that would lead to <coughs> the game crashing if the exploit didn't succeed, or they might be able to get control over a computer if this vulnerability is what's going on. So they can crash the game. But can they take over your computer, right? Everyone knows, OK, even, even Respawn has acknowledged that there's a security vulnerability. There's a crash going around. But can they take over your computer? And I, my, my answer to this is I am pretty sure no. Um, and this is because buffer overflows are very difficult to exploit on modern systems. Um, the computer security folks like um, in my industry have been trying to harden systems against these buffer overflow attacks for the past 20, 25 years. And nowadays, it's very difficult to exploit a buffer overflow, even for a very skilled attacker. This is because of protections like data flow execution prevention, or DEP, that I, we just discussed a few slides ago. And that's basically how the computer won't treat usernames as executable code, right? So the attacker can't use their own code, or can't like, put their code in the username and run that as code. The computer's not going to let that happen. There's also you know, mitigations like ASLR, um, stack canaries, and heap hardening that make the exploitation way more complicated and complex, and generally just a lot less reliable. And it kind of makes it very challenging for these remote exploits to happen. The, rem the exploit payload also doesn't make sense. Um, the payload is essentially like the malicious packet or whatever data that causes your client to crash or um, you know, get taken over. So the payload doesn't make sense to me either. So um, I saw this payload being um, passed around online, and they're like, oh, this is the malicious packet that's triggering this exploit in your client or your game client. And that doesn't make sense to me because if I look through this packet, um, most of it looks pretty reasonable, makes sense to me, except for this player name field, right? And they said that this, oh, this buffer overflow is happening in the username fields. OK, so I look at the player name field, right? That makes sense to me. And it, obviously, there looks like there's some weird, crafted, you know, malicious data here, right? But if we look at this data, I'll explain to you why this payload doesn't make sense for a buffer overflow exploit that leads to remote code execution, or RCE. Um, so if they say it's an overflow, OK, let's go with that. So if it's an overflow, then what type of overflows could it be? It could be a heap overflow or a stack overflow. Those are the two main types of buffer overflows. And the thing is, ex OK, so let's assume that's a heap overflow, right? Exploiting a heap overflow is extremely difficult for a modern system, um, especially for uh, exploit like this, because it's just a single packet, right? It's one shot. It runs on a remote computer. It's very tricky to get right. There's no heap grooming or heap spraying. Um, those are two you know, technical terms that we use. But all you have to really know is that the attacker can't really control like, the memory layout of the, of the game very well. And because of that, and, especially, and because like, you know, modern Windows uh, systems have a hardened heap, which also tries to defend against um, you know, basic attacks, it, also, it, it leads me to the conclusion that this, um, if it was a heap overflow, it would not be exploitable. So that's why I think that this is definitely not a heap overflow attack. So then if it's not a heap overflow, then let's say it's a stack overflow, right? And that seems more plausible to me, because exploiting stack overflows is significantly easier than exploiting heap overflows. And there have been you know, stack overflows in, in games before. That's been a common thing. But you know, on these modern systems, there's, there's exploit defenses like stack canaries and data, flow ex uh, data execution prevention. So an attacker would need to use a technique called a ROP chain. So OK, going off of that uh, assumption, I think these are very reasonable assumptions to make. Let's look for a ROP chain in the payload. So we're going to look at the payload and see if we find any ROP chains, right? 
So um, we see some data in the player name field here, and it's like, okay, maybe this is the attacker's ROP chain. Could it, is this a plausible ROP chain? And so what does a real ROP chain look like in, in a real exploit? A real, a real ROP chain will look something like this. Um, ignore all the comments, like the text. Just focus on the numbers here, right? So as you can see, these numbers, they're, they're pretty, um, they're, they're not very uniform. But if you look at the numbers from the, the payload, right, they're very uniform. They're just going up like sequentially. It's like 3225, 3226, 3227, 3228, 3229. That's very uniform. But in a real ROP chain, the numbers are not uniform at all. And that suggests to me that this is not like a plausible ROP chain, right? If you look at these numbers, it's like 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, and it's just counting up like 81, 82, 80, and so on. That suggests to me that it's not a, it's not a real, this, is, this would not be a ROP chain if it was you know, a real exploit payload. So that suggests to me if there's no ROP chain, well, because of those mitigations I mentioned before, this attack is probably not a stack overflow either. And because we ruled out the two major types of uh, buffer overflow attacks, then this attack is probably not a buffer overflow either. So, I mean, to me, um, everyone's been saying, like, oh, it's a buffer overflow. Like, they can overflow this, this piece of memory, or they can, I mean, because it goes past the end, and it can, like, overwrite other stuff and attack your computer. Like, no. To me, that doesn't make sense. This, I don't think this can possibly be a buffer overflow. And if it, I mean, okay, maybe it is a buffer overflow, but if it is, it's definitely not exploitable in a way that can allow the attacker to gain control of your computer. What I'm saying is, is that it's either not a buffer overflow, like everyone's been saying, or if it is, it's definitely not exploitable in a way that allows hackers to gain control over your computer and modify your files and stuff like that. Okay, so let's say it's not a buffer overflow, right? Maybe there's some other advanced techniques going on in this payload, like use after free or type confusion. That's also not plausible to me because the exploit is a one-shot remote exploit. This type of exploit is extremely tricky to get right, and these more advanced techniques require very precise, delicate control. And these uh, protections like ASLR, like we brought up, make this very difficult. So I think that's also not plausible. Personally, what I think is this exploit, this payload, just, this packet just causes like your game client to crash, but it does not let them take control of your computer. So that's like very annoying, right? Because you can't play the game. But I would say it's largely harmless in the sense that they're not going to be able to hack your computer and gain control over it. So in conclusion, uh, don't believe shit you see from random people on the internet. I also think that if you don't know what you're like, if you're not an expert, you, you shouldn't make shit up. And don't spread misinformation. That's kind of like those people who think that the horse dewormer will cure their disease. I, I think that's really, that's like fake news. Um, so thank you for watching. Thank you for listening to my spiel and listening to me talk about some technical uh, jargon bullshit for the last few minutes. Please follow my OnlyFans. I like to post pictures of my cooking. Um, yeah, thanks for watching.